guys. Welcome to the We Need to Calm Down podcast. I'm Devin. And I'm Joe. And this is the show where we talk about all things Taylor Swift. That's right. This is the show where two friends finally get to let their dedication to the first female winner of the Global Icon Award, Taylor Swift, fly. We'll be discussing everything from song breakdowns, Taylor news, and our insane fan theories. Yeah, and this is so exciting. We're back to song breakdowns again. Mm -hmm. It's been a bit. It has been, it feels like it's been like at least a month and a half, if not more, since we did our last. Well, she's been putting out news nonstop. We just haven't had a break, you know, fearless, all that kind of stuff related around it. But speaking of Taylor Swift theories, our fan (laughs) theories, I think she's been uh, putting us through the ringer lately. Everyone's like going through, like, what was it? The um, the 430 was supposed to be the release of Woodvale and like there were a million theories about it. Woodvale, and Red, ni- uh, Speak 1989. Now. Spe- mm-hmm. Yeah, like she's just dropping like a million hits. Like what is the one about like how it's not going to be 1989. It's going to be Speak Now because she has two emojis and everything she's doing. Well, no, or it's three. three emojis. Three emojis and well, well, well. And mm-hmm. like all of these things of threes of why it's going to be Speak Now. People thought it was going to be all three albums dropped at once. I... I think firmly we're getting 1989 next firmly because I can't because it's it follows the exact same MO of fearless where she she released love story in a match.com commercial and then fearless was the album she released wildest dreams in a trailer for a movie 1989 I just I'm just so then what is she doing just toying with us and it's not okay there was a, what was it? Some TV show. I forget the name of it, but it was like, oh, oh it was uh, it was Parks and Rec. Mm. And someone compared it to a Parks and Rec clip where uh, there's like the end of the world conspiracy theorists. <laughs> and Leslie's just like, yeah, so uh, the, the end of the world didn't happen. And like, well, actually, I went back to my notes. And so we missed it. It's supposed to be. And I feel like that's what everyone's doing <laughs> right now. And it's going to be, it's uh, Taylor Swift is supposed to drop 989 on, on this day. Because if you add them all together, it's 13. And then mm-hmm. someone's like, yeah, but that day is X, Y, Z. Oh, did I say that day? I meant this day. <laughs> and everyone's like, how did we miss it? This is actually... And she just laughs on her throne of gold bars. Sometimes uh, it's really painful to be a Taylor Swift fan. Well, the one thing I'm excited about is hopefully this, I, I hope we get some quiet for a little bit because I'm excited for this. We get to this episode. We're going way back to Evermore. I know it, it literally way back, like what a month mm-hmm. uh, we're going way back to Evermore to, to do a track five song breakdown of tolerate it. And I'm really interested to see because we, we do want, we're going back to Evermore but it feels weird because we're not in Evermore anymore, I don't think. So I'm interested to hear what uh, what our listeners think if they want us to keep doing song breakdowns and make it through Evermore. Because we didn't even finish Folklore before she dropped Evermore on us. We didn't finish Lover. We didn't We'd, finish Folklore. We didn't we have, finish Evermore. I I don't know what to do. Like, So if you guys tell us what you want us to do with the uh, – leave a comment, send us a DM. If you want us to keep doing Evermore and make it all the way through this album, I, I feel like we kind of have to because once we start doing Fearless, 1989 is going to come out and mm-hmm. we're going to have to do that. And then we're going to, like, there's no good way to do this right now. So I think I think we just have to stick to our guns, finish Evermore, go back, finish Folklore, go back, finish Lover, and then start from the very beginning. So what are we talking about on this typical Tuesday night? So we are breaking down the track five of Evermore, which is Tolerate It. Breaking it down. What a song. It's not quite up there for me, but let's give some context about the song. Go for it. Okay. So Tolerate It tells the story of a woman who's holding her ah, who's holding her significant other on a pedestal. Uh, almost worshiping his every move and it follows her as she slowly realizes that even though she's giving him her literal everything uh, he's just going through life tolerating her unappreciative not really caring as much for her as she does for him so this is one of the other times 
that Taylor has used a story that she's either watched or read to write a song. Uh, the first iteration we can really point to was Death by a Thousand Cuts, which was uh, the movie Someone Great, which we actually reviewed. So make sure to check that episode out. Uh, it's interesting. The song is actually directly inspired by the novel Rebecca by Daphne de Mor- Maurier. Maurier? Mm-hmm. I wrote the phonetic spelling just so I would get it right. <laughs> Um, as Swift mentioned in her interview with Zane and Apple Music last December, uh, in it she says, when I was reading Rebecca, I was thinking about how her husband just tolerates her. She's doing all these things. She's trying so hard. She's trying to impress him, and he's just tolerating her the whole time. There was a part of me that was relating to that because at some point in my life, I felt that way. So I ended up writing the song Tolerate It, which is all about trying to love someone who is amb- ambivalent. Which is a great word. Great word. Yeah. Uh, In the book, uh, a woman marries a man who she adores, only to find out that her husband is still in love with his dead wife, Rebecca. Uh, We won't go into any spoilers for the book in case anyone wants to read it, uh, but we might hint at parts of it. We might hint that parts of it may have inspired No Body, No Crime. Uh, It's also speculated that this song could be about Princess Diana and her relationship with Princess Charles after the show The Crown debuted, but I don't know. Princess Charles? Princess, did I say Princess Charles? Prince Charles. Uh, he probably deserves it at this point. Yeah. Uh, I Diana. haven't seen The Crown, so I don't know anything about that. And I'm not, the only thing I know about <laughs> Princess Diana are Elton John wrote a song about her, and there's a conspiracy theory, and that's it. And I don't even know the conspiracy. Th- She's alive? Is that the conspiracy no, the theory? conspiracy was that the, uh, the royals killed her. No, this is not a good time to be a royal. Oh, yeah, that's no. A, well, that's a lot. That's a, that's a whole you're still thing. royal. <laughs> <laughs> well that's what the whole you know Meghan markle thing was coming about and that's you know harry saw this uh, yeah okay yeah. this isn't a royals <laughs> podcast no but it could uh, be it's it, it is <laughs> <laughs> branch out you can do so much other stuff uh it's funny because this song is actually one of my most listened to songs in the album but it's only because it follows tis the damn season <laughs> yes uh, this is our track five. So this is our second track five in less than a year. Mm-hmm. Insane. Uh, but Devin, what were our first impressions of the song? So this was, I believe, a slow rise, but with a killer bridge. Mm-hmm. I think we immediately identified that this bridge was a fantastic one. It was different than the others that we had heard. Not as great as, you know, Champagne Problems, but still a really good bridge. So you started the ranking uh, at number four and it always came on after tis the damn season so that's where you got all the streams from yeah. i started this with a ranking of 10 mm-hmm. yeah you kind of nailed it mm-hmm. <laughs> uh so what what jumped out when we first heard it i i remember it being good like i remember liking it like i felt like that way with most of the songs this album. when i first heard it i liked it but i wasn't i couldn't pinpoint specifics about why i liked it but i do remember it feeling unlike a track five mm-hmm. like I it just, just didn't i don't I'd know. agree with that yeah uh, we will test this is a track five uh we on the we need to calm down podcast have a track five metric that we like to test all track fives against because we did have one false shepherd slip through the, the cracks so we have to make sure that all track fives do uh come to that we'll do that at the end of the episode but you you agree it just doesn't feel like a track five Yes, if you if you're interested in listening to our track five episode where we talk about this, it is the lover is not a track or not lover. Uh, the archer uh, is, the not, archer a is not a track five. It's because it's not. <laughs> so what do you think about it now? Because personally, I need to be in the mood to listen to this song. Like I can't just listen to it on shuffle. Like I have to seek it out. But when I do listen to it, I love this song. It's interesting. I'm the exact opposite. I literally, I never seek this song out to listen to, but when it comes on, like when I get a little, a cheeky little shuffle on there, I cry on the spot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I never really listen to it, but I don't skip it that often. And when I don't skip it, like I, I feel it. And it's, it's just that bridge, mm-hmm. it's just that bridge that comes in. So what, what's something that we didn't notice uh, at first that like now that we've had some time to to really delve into the song that like what that we're now like starting to see and appreciate number one the time signature what is the time signature it's in a five four again 
What yes. are you doing, Erin? She's really liking the the five four, and that's curious because like I'm wondering if I don't. I'm not really a big national fan, but or a fan of the national. But I wonder if this is what they do in these other songs, and she's just mm. going with it and taking it by yeah. stride, like stride. But it's just this general like uneasiness of the song because of the time signature. It just sounds. It's so hard to pinpoint it too. Like if you don't know the time signature even just trying to find the beats of the song it's kind of hard to do and then you find it and you're good i'm terrible at that so i will literally never find this <laughs> okay so you ended the song at number nine which yeah. was a pretty it dropped five places for you yeah it's still a good song i think again like it was just over inflated by how many times i listened to it initially because i would whenever i went to sat down to listen to evermore I would, instead of starting at one with Willow, like you're supposed to, I would start at Tis the Damn Season because I just mm. wanted to listen to it so much. And then I would just go through, it would be Tis the Damn Season all the way to Evermore and then back to Willow and end on Gold Rush, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it definitely, the first ranking I had, I was like, well, I'm listening to this song a lot. I must like it. It wasn't really the case. It's still a great song, but like I said, it's just not one I seek out when it's when i when it comes on shuffle i really like it but like it's not i'm never like wow i'm in a real tolerated mood so my first ranking was 10 my last ranking was 10 so it didn't change but in the meantime it dropped down i think to the lowest it was was number 15 for me so pretty low but again that's because you had to be in the mood for it I think I think also when it hit 15 that was when the two bonus tracks came up so mm. it might have been 13 around that time but still like it still dropped a bit so yeah yeah I, I think I think that's just the the consensus is it's just like th- there's nothing wrong with this song Mm-mm. like don't like again like it's so hard when we talk about rankings specifically for these albums and when we get into other albums we can we can you know might be a little more pronounced but like this album specifically every song is so quality that even if we're saying it's a nine it's a 10 or even when it was a 15 it's still a great song and Mm -hmm. we still enjoy it and love it it's just we were comparing it to so many other great songs like it it's really hard to pinpoint that down exactly so do you want to dive into some lyrics yes so the first line i think that you picked out is I notice everything you do or don't do. Because this is a secret Lord podcast. <laughs> and this line reminds me of Lord. Uh, no, it's it's a, a one. This is just something that I feel in a lot of relationships. Like I definitely relate to when you're in a relationship and you're like very sensitive to things. Like if they, if they, if you're noticing everything they do do, right? Like always, that's something you're doing. But then you start to, when you get paranoid, or mm-hmm. something like that you start to notice things they don't do like well they said i l y instead of i love you mm-hmm. why? or love you instead of i love you mm-hmm. like these little things you just notice and it reminds me of the lord uh lyric from the uh, i think it's the louvre uh mm-hmm. where she says i overthink your punctuation use like those <laughs> things kind of come together to me like i think and notice everything you do or don't do i overthink your punctuation use like it's just mm-hmm. really diving into the minutia of a relationship and trying to figure out where you stand where you are and what is happening yeah <laughs> and then the line you're so much older and wiser and i and the cadence of the line is fantastic but i think that it's also like it could have this double meaning to it. Like you can interpret it in different ways. It could be, you know, she like admires him because of it. Like, oh, you're so much older and wiser. But it could also be like, she's being sarcastic because like, you know, you're so much older and wiser. It's like, you know, he must be better than me or something. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you pointed out when you're too old, uh, too wise to trust me and too old to care. From Coney Island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, I, we might have to do an episode down the line of like we did with folklore where we tie different lines together and like compare references in inner album references because mm-hmm. i feel like there are just we didn't we didn't think about it as much in this this album or this like for this record but the more we go through these song breakdowns the more we're noticing so it might be worth it to really delve into that a little bit down the line mm-hmm. uh, but you had the next line too 
mm-hmm. wait by the door like I'm just a kid. And it's like the adoration in this statement. Like it's a big event that you look forward to for most of the day because that's when, you know, your person comes home and everything feels complete. And, you know, we were talking about it in one song. I think it's like, I don't know if it's the best day or never grow up, but it's something about hearing the sound of the keys. And I forget what the line remember, is. Remember what it sounded like when your dad comes home. Mm-hmm. Mm. But it's just like waiting by the door, like a kid. It's it's like a kid and like a dog. Like I feel yeah. like like animals, like people who are helpless. It's like, you know, that's your your protector. And like, this is your your whole world. It's like, you're just waiting for them to come home. My mom breaks my heart every time I leave her house because she sends me a picture of our dog sitting by the door. Wait, mm. Like when I leave, like, why isn't he back yet? <laughs> I love that and I hate that. We actually get to the next line. Use my best colors for your portrait, which kind of reminds me of that childlike thing. Because you, you ever think of like a kid, like, you, I don't think adults do ever do this, but like saying best colors, my best colors, like mm. these, these, the crowns that you love the most those are your favorite colors. I use those colors for you. As an adult, I don't think we have best colors anymore. So it's it seems like a very childlike wonder yeah. situation. Also in Rebecca, the, the book, there is a scene where the main character dresses up in the same colors as a portrait of the dead wife, Rebecca. So Creepy. we're seeing direct comparisons to this novel that Taylor wrote. Uh, but there's another there's another facet to it too of like the idea of dressing up a bad situation mm-hmm. you're trying to make the most of it she's trying to convince herself that this situation is better than it really is mm-hmm. like rose colored glasses mm. the best color rose <laughs> <laughs> uh then the next line if it's all in my head tell me now like that's just sad i love like uh, we were we were doing this like scripting for this <laughs> And Devin just writes, if it's all I had tell me now, and just all caps, this is just sad. It is. <laughs> like, if it's all in my head, tell me now. It's just yeah. like, so what, defeated. What What does that mean, though? Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just curious. Like, does she mean is is she crazy that she that she thinks he doesn't like her as much? Or is she crazy that she like what 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 is in her head i think the anxiety of Mm. him not liking her like if it's all in my head tell me now tell me i've got it wrong somehow like no no it's i know my love should be celebrated but you tolerate it like that's her belief that you know she does all these things and he just tolerates it but if it's Mm. all in her head if she's just having this anxiety about it like tell me it's interesting because i never thought of it that way Mm. i always thought if it's all in my head tell me now like she's saying is our relationship it all mm. in my head like should i just break should we are we are we really even together like gotcha it could be both either way they're both mm-hmm. horrifically depressing yeah uh, i like yours a little bit better than mine though <laughs> um the next line i take your indiscretions all in good fun and like what a indiscretions as a good word oh my god that is a good one did we dictionary that one I didn't dictionary that one, I think. Uh, but a bunch of these lines just make me think like the main character is the kind of person who just loves the idea of a person, but not the actual person themselves. Like, I'm going to make your bad things that you say or whatever. I'm just going to make them look better than they, they are. Like, oh, he doesn't really mean that. Dressing Again, with up. the rose colored glasses. Yeah. Dressing up a bad situation. I, that's such an interesting thing, too, because I take your indiscretions all in good fun. Like, just the dichotomy of the words chosen there. You see like this this SAT level word indiscretion and then good fun is just such a childlike mm-hmm. word. I don't know. Something about that stands out to me. It feels like very intentional. You like just were just about to gear up for the next line though. I felt I felt like you were like a getting ready brace for liftoff kind of thing. While you were out there building other worlds, where was I? Why did you <laughs> Louis Armstrong that? <laughs> what was that? Wow, it's just the the entire bridge the entire bridge just murders me like taylor murdered Esty's cheating husband <laughs> <laughs> like it just does <laughs> it instantly takes me out i'm so glad i didn't read these notes before <laughs> <laughs> but 
but just like building other worlds like this man has a whole life potentially another family a world outside of you that he hid from you like it's not just small thing you built other worlds like where was i how were you doing this that's so fascinating to me like is this is this where we get a revelation of like something it was he cheating on her Maybe. was something going on because it like kind of reminds me of ivy like i feel like this song and ivy are very similar like they seem like sister songs to me mm. I don't, i'm probably wrong there i don't know why i don't really get it but <laughs> well and then you get where's that man who threw blankets over my barbed wire you know something wrapped up all my past mistakes and barbed wire from invisible string mm. mm-hmm really loves the barbar i just want to put a point this out because no one's just going to see this but uh all of the next lines that we put in here devin put in all caps because they are meant to be screamed (laughs) and then skip over a line now i'm begging for footnotes in the story of your life footnotes Mm. just footnotes that line alone the bar is on the floor it's buried i I feel like I feel like, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast before, but I feel like I've said this in my, in life at one point, these words have escaped my mouth that I said, this song is okay, but that line alone makes this song a thousand times better than it, than it ever would be because Mm -hmm. it's just, there's so much to unpack there begging one, like just the choice Mm -hmm. of verb I'm begging for footnotes it's like i didn't think you'd go lower than begging oh footnotes footnotes okay lower lower in the story of your life like you're married and and, or i I don't know if they ever define say that they're Mm -hmm. married but like they're in a a long enough relationship that they live together set the table blah 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 like footnotes and she just like she doesn't even mention her own life her own story it's i want to be in the story of your life Mm. the adoration not our, not our story mm-hmm. like this isn't our story this is your story i'm just living in it yeah oh. and then just the story of your life relates the story of my life one direction story of us looks a lot like a tragedy now you know you know after taylor like put the last like did the last pen stroke of the e on life she went yeah that's the lyric right there <laughs> you know she like sat and just like stared at it for a little bit like taylor you you outdid yourself this <laughs> did time. it again girl <laughs> and then the next line drawing hearts in the bylines always taking up too much space and time like as a kid i remember just doodling in the bylines in school just like little hearts and stuff i just i just googled what bylines were they're like the so sides no. of the paper mm. like if you're like taking notes in like a, a notebook or something it's the the space that usually doesn't get taken up and then always taking up too much space and time like this daydream illusion of hers is taking up too much time in her life and too much space in her brain or even for him it's just it's too much space too much time that he just does not have for her oh my gosh it's just so sad guys like oh my gosh and you assume i'm fine but what would you do if i (laughs) And then just the one line that kills us. And you, you we pointed, pointed this out, out immediately. Mm-hmm. Like this was like the, the first thing that we said after listening to this song. It took this dagger in me and removed it. Mm. Why is that so impactful, Joe? Uh, because a long time ago, there was a Tumblr post. <laughs> in the before time. In the before times, there was a Tumblr post uh, that mentioned specifically, like it was this weird, like, uh like health guide that said if you get if you get stabbed do not remove the knife it is keeping the blood in you and it's it's very it's very dangerous to remove the knife and it's more painful to remove the knife than to leave it in and then it's then the next comment was on the other side if you were trying to kill someone <laughs> definitely remove the knife <laughs> but Tumblr but like humor. But Taylor is a big Tumblr person. And, like, I, I don't know. Did you see that post? Have you seen that post go around? I mean, probably. I feel like I feel like it was, like, a relatively popular post that most people had seen. And I wouldn't be put it past Taylor to have seen it, too. Like, Taylor is known for Tumblr. So maybe, I mean, but just knowing, I'm sure she, if she did see that, log that away. Because that's, 
to make it into this line, like it's so subtle. It's so small because uh-huh. you don't think about it unless you know that random fact. You don't really think about the fact that, OK, cool, you stabbed me whatever and removed it and you go okay cool like what why why even say that but like just removed it just say you hurt me and then made it worse well so did he put the dagger in her i mean you could imply yes but it never says like you put mm. this dagger in me and mm, removed that's it a good point. took this dagger in me and removed it so she was just who put the dagger in her esty you sneaky <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's, that's interesting. I never, I I always assumed it was you took this dagger or you put this dagger in me and removed it. That's really fascinating. That's a really good point, Devin. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe it's like, you know what? Here's, here's a, here's a off the cuff thing. It's kind of like anxiety, like anxiety to anyone, regardless of who's in your life or whatever. If you have anxiety, that is a dagger in you. Mm -hmm. And to remove that dagger makes all of the anxiety makes all the blood come out and just exacerbates the the damage from that anxiety to you it's like letting the floodgates open Mm, yeah such a great line such a such a and and, in such like so small even just the next line in comparison gain the weight of you gain the weight of you and lose it. it it's just like the emptiness that follows yeah that's huge. All right. Let's Devin take me take me away to our secret. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, can we do some music behind the lyrics? Yes. So immediately off the bat, the song is in five four. That is so cool. It is such a weird time signature, and it's hard to find because like it's not a structured song. Like she sings kind of like loose and drags out these lyrics and these you know notes. So it's hard to find at first. And I was trying to think like how you can count it out. And it's slow. The the BPM, I don't even think I wrote it down, but it's a slower song. So trying to find the notes to it, it's usually when you count in five, four, you count up to three and then up to two. So it would be one, two, three, one, two, one. So it's, I can't, you can't play the song, but it's like, I'll, if you're watching the video, it's like da 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 like that. That's so weird. It is. Uh, instruments in the song a lot less than the last song, which was "Tis the Damn Season." We have violin, synthesizer, piano, percussion, some weird things in there. There's like a shaker. There's like not a cowbell, but like the wooden block at one point. It sounds like keyboard, drum machine, cello, and bass. So not a lot, very simple song, but it's not a simple song. It's a weird song and I love it. So there's this like weird little intro thing and it sounds like something's kind of like loading up and glitching out and it kind of happens a little bit in the end too, but I didn't notice this until we really listened to it. It's like, (laughs) I remember thinking like, I think I realized that and didn't say anything about it, like literally days before you did. Mm-hmm. and like I, it was just like a personal revelation of like like i remember listening to a shuffle and I, it was i didn't have any of the lyrics up or what song was playing it was just on my my echo and i hear like this intro i'm like what is this song and then tolerate it started and i was like is that how tolerate starts what and then you immediately like like next day or something text me go did you know about this intro and i was yeah. like yeah i just learned about it what is that mm-hmm so she also has this subtle vocal layering. So she's like harmonizing with herself. It's like this low alto register. Like, I think it's, I don't even know if it's harmonizing. It might just be an octave down, but she goes, you know, if it's all in my head, tell me now. Like it's her, it's not, it doesn't sound like it would be Aaron or, or Jack. Um, and the vibe of the song is just very odd too. Like it feels light but it's like this dark and heaviness underneath it. Like the piano is pretty standard, like the dun, 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 dun. But then the dun, dun, like it just brings it back down. And then this drum comes in occasionally, the and it sounds like a heartbeat. Like it just sounds like this kind of interjection, like dun, dun, dun. Like it just kind of comes in. And then the jitteriness of the song comes in with the drum machine, the 
in the background glitches occasionally it just makes it feel uneasy probably like the character in the relationship does mm. i love i love that she's like using production a lot to like emphasize different feelings and things in the actual music is ugh. yeah and the violin and the cello just like really fill the space and it takes you along with the song to kind of stabilize what is an unstable song mm. Are there any other five fours on this album? Um, it's closure. Closure is on this album, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's dun, 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 dun. That might be. I don't know if it's five four or like seven something. Seven two. No, that's impossible. <laughs> but that that's another weird time signature song. That's a lot. I I mean I'm interested in it. It's making it. It's making for really great music. All right. So thank you, Devin for teaching me a little bit more about what's going on behind yes. the lyrics in this in this song. Uh, but we have one last thing. Usually we'd end it there, but we do have a track five. So every track five, we have to put through the track five test, which is something that I came up with last May or June or something, where I had really big grief with The Archer because it just never felt like a real track five to me. And I, I was set out to prove that it wasn't actually a track five. So if you're curious of how I did that, go back there. I came up with some very ridiculous, admittedly, uh, stipulations that a track five needs to have. These are just my own, obviously. The, do Take with them a grain of salt. But Devin seems to let me do it. So, <laughs> so I'm going to keep, keep implementing it here. Uh, so how does Tolerate It stand up to my track five test. So the first part of a track five test is there are pillars that every track five song has to follow. So there are four generic pillars and then three like what load bearing pillars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay. number one, every track five generally has to have a somber overtone. They're generally pretty sad or like lower register. Mm -hmm. and this one oh definitely no doubt uh they're generally very vulnerable songs oh yeah this one this one fits that bill i'm gonna say simplicity is the next one and uh no this song is not simple uh five four signature ain't simple uh there's just there's a lot of complex lyrics a lot of complex emotions in this song yeah it's, I don't think it's a simple song, but I don't think that's Warren enough to kick it out of the track five club. It is, it is one indiscretion, but uh, the next one we have is specific. So every track five is very specific. They're, they're usually stories directly from Taylor's life or something that like is just a very specific. I can't think of another word, <laughs> but yeah, this song is very, very, yeah. A lot of details in the lyrics, a lot of things that can't just be broadly applied. And this is a very specific song. There are very minute details down to the age of the significant other, down to the exact situation they're in. It's specific enough that I can't really relate to this song, weirdly mm. enough. Uh, then the three, the three load-bearing pillars, we'll call them from now on, uh, is romance, relationships, and heartbreak. And yes, yes, oh my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all of those are in this song in spades uh so it lines up uh, so it's seven or six out of seven of the pillars it nails on so i'm willing to give that a good passing grade so track uh, tolerate it does fall into track five pillars the next thing that we generally rate rate it on is romantic content track fives are romantic songs or generally about relationships maybe not romantic in the ooey gooey lovey kind of way but they're about a romantic relationship it could be argued that this whole song is relationship heartbreak central. Uh, so the way that I usually do this is I count each line, like separate individual line of the song and determine whether it is about heartbreak or, or a, a relationship or not. Every single line in this song is about a relationship. Every, there is not a single line that is not about their relationship at least 30 of them and again it could even be argued all of them because mm -hmm. yeah are about heartbreak it's just all heartbreak there's not a single line in the song that isn't about either of those things so flying colors 
surpasses, no doubt, all romantic content. The other one that I'm really hype about that's really good is Me's versus You's. This is a really weird stipulation that I pulled out when I was when I came up with these tests, but I noticed in a lot of track fives, it's generally the, the focus is on the other person and not on Taylor herself. She generally focuses on either the things they're doing wrong or the way that they're acting that is messing her up. And it tracked throughout every track five song except for The Archer that Taylor referenced you way more times significantly more times than she referenced me herself it follows suit in this song as well uh there are 24 u's in this song this actually falls right in the middle uh but still in the ballpark there are more than cold as you and white horse but less than the rest besides archer which has very little it's the only reverse song uh, and the me's, there's only eight me's in the song. And this is among the lower number of me's. It's the same number as White Horse, more than Cold As You, Dear John, and All Too Well. So it, it, it's a little, it fits right in with all of the other track fives, which is great. This song is definitely Taylor talking more about the significant other and their effect that, that, than she is talking about herself, which is extremely apparent in the story. And then finally, we have specificity. So I would usually point out lyrics that point to specificity but i don't really think i need to the song is the situation is so specific and it's the one thing i will say that kind of is a negative towards this song is we usually say when it comes to taylor she is so good at writing about herself in specific situations that she has felt that seem like no she said herself i don't think anyone can relate to this and somehow we all can this is the only song, I don't know about you, Devin, but I cannot relate to it at all. I have never been in this situation before. Not to say that I don't think it exists. Obviously, the situation exists. Here. I've been fortunate enough to never have been in this situation. Mm -hmm. I'd agree with that. I think, you know, I've never really related to something like this. Or, I mean, the feelings of not, of liking someone more than they like you has definitely oh, been yeah. in my life. But it's, it's hard to compare this song to other track fives because of how specific of a story it is. Mm. Like this is more of like a story track than just about Taylor herself, which we haven't really seen too much before in the track five realm. That's what I was going to say. The other thing is that the, we could add another pillar that kind of negates the song too, in that track fives are personal. Mm -hmm. Track fives are about Taylor and her own relationships and her own life. She does say that she does relate to it like she related to the book rebecca and the the narrator of that book or she's gone through situations like that but again this book this song is is a story that's not it's more inspired by taylor's life than directly related to it mm -hmm. so that is it does make it a lot tougher so i do think going through all of those metrics this is definitely a track five though i will admit it is on the weirder side of the track fives where that being said we have nine track fives now where do we where does this one fall amongst the others for us definitely bottom half but it's hard because as a song itself the song is pretty good but as a track five i don't think mm -hmm. it compares to the other track fives that's i'm right there with you uh, mm -hmm. i i've never come close to this experience so that makes it really hard to rank and like I said, it's funny. We do see track five is usually something that is so specific to Taylor's life, but it, it, this track just breaks that mold and it makes it so hard to really meld with the rest of the track five. So I think I like it, but I rank it towards the bottom of with Archer, Cold As You, and All You Have To Do Is Stay. Like it just doesn't hit that upper echelon of track fives for me. All you had to do is stay. That's robbery. That's a good track five. It is. It is a great track five, but like, it's, it's probably the top of those three. I would say. There was a, uh, a thing on TikTok where it was all you had to do was stay, but in minor key, and it just pulls out how sad the song really is because it's such a boppy song and it's so happy. Oh, yeah. it's I like, cried to that song. Like mm -hmm. that's how bad it is. Like, yeah. It's a great song. Again, these are all track fives. They're all yeah. phenomenal songs. It's just, I mean, you, you're also dealing with Dear John with yeah. All Too Well. I know. You're delicate. up. Like, yeah. You're up against it, man. Like, those are some certified, My Tears Ricochet. Mm. Like, yeah. All right. you, 
Uh, so do you guys, so that's tolerated. Do we have anything we want to say in closing about it or? That's pretty much it for me. Yeah, this was a, this, we didn't have as much on this song just because it is a little bit of a middle of the road song. Weirdly enough, it's weird to get this, this little about a track five, but well, that's where we are right now. Um, if you guys like what you hear, be sure to give us a review and a five-star rating on Apple. Uh, it, it, tell a friend about us, share us with someone, uh, let them know about your new favorite podcast. Follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to see our beautiful faces when we talk about this. Uh, we are at We Need to Calm Down Podcast on pretty much everything, most active on Instagram and YouTube. If you have a suggestion for an episode, drop us a comment or a DM. We love hearing about, from you guys. So, yeah. And aside from that, thank you so much for listening. We will see you uh, the next typical Tuesday, two weeks after. So I don't know the date. So not next week, <laughs> but the week after. Uh, other than that, come back. We'll be here. <laughs> <laughs>